Hey, what's up, guys? So we at UCF, and I'm with... Summer. Zakaria. My name is Rich. Nice to meet y'all. So um, they're just doing a photo shoot by the library. Pretty cool. I'm going to ask them the question. So what do y'all think the purpose of life is? Uh, that's a good question. Yeah. Um, if you were to give one sentence, what would you say this is the purpose of life? Simple answer, but deep. Mm. I would say, ultimately, I believe I'm here to make disciples for Christ and go to heaven. Look at this smart. <laughs> um, the purpose of life, it honestly is what you make it. Like, you're on this earth to learn lessons, to make mistakes. So it's like, you're not perfect, but it's like, have fun. Really, it's just understanding and trying to find yourself and your purpose as to really what your mission is to complete while you're here on earth. I like that. Both answers. Cool. And um, do y'all believe we have a soul? And we do believe we have a spirit. What's the difference between the soul, the spirit, and the body? The body is more so like your earthly, like your earthly Physical home. Vessel. Your spirit is more so like. Mm. Damn, that's tough. <laughs> I would definitely say your soul is more so just like who you are internally. Like that's where, like the owner of the home, so to say. Your spirit, it's more so to me, it's like your aura, like the vibe you give off, kind of just like. Mm. Yeah, you can take that. <laughs> Ooh, I would say the body is the physical mm -hmm. vessel, for sure. Um, the soul is where the passions and the personality resides. Personality. And I would say that the spirit is what guides you to make the right decisions. What's your moral compass, right and wrong? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I, I love that's real good. That's real. So you guys have thought about this before. Yeah. All right. So where do you think our soul goes when we die? Mm. <laughs> it stays. Like, our, I don't think our soul ever leaves. Our spirit transcends um, and is with the king. And then our, I think our soul is what stays with our families and loved ones. Yeah. Um, going from off what she said, soul is more so like, especially when you pass, it's like energy never dies. So it's like no matter what, like you'll always be here, but you won't be here, so to say. Spirit, um, coming from like a spiritual aspect, it's more so probably like where your nirvana is or like your home is. Yeah, if it's heaven, it's heaven. If it's hell, it's hell. It's more so just how like your reflection of life and what you actually did, that's where you actually go. And, then, and who defines that? Like as far as like who, who makes that decision about where we go, who who created the laws, who who made it like so where you know like defines good and evil and all that. Like how does that how, how does that work? Hmm. I feel like especially when it comes to religion, like I feel like everyone has the same idea, but it's just so from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. So like if you're Christian, you'll say God. If you're someone else, you'll say someone else. So it's really up to your creator and your opinion, like what your definition of creator and higher power really is. And what about Satanists that believe in Satan? They worship Satan and they sacrifice children and animals. Hey man, every man for themselves on that part. Hey. God gonna decide on me. <laughs> I'll see y'all in heaven when I get there. Yeah, yeah. that's where I'm gonna see y'all. So like, have you guys studied other religions and different spiritualities, like practices and all that? You guys have studied yeah. that stuff? Yeah, I looked it up and like researched it and kind of just seen, especially from like living and coming to UCF, like everyone is different. So mm -hmm. it's just interesting to see how people move differently, but it's like all in all, we're all connected in some type of way. Okay, all right, that's cool. So I actually came here when I was 18, 19 and 20. Left, went to the New York military, started doing a whole bunch of wild stuff for money, made a lot of money, traveled the world, started studying a lot of religions. I studied, um. Islam, Buddhism, I actually went to Haiti, seen voodoo done in front of me, New Orleans, Santeria, um, shamanism. I did it, um, everything, chakra balancing. I was a warlock, moving hundreds of pounds of weed in Cali. I, had, I owned properties, I had cars, everything you can imagine. Dope boy in the club, popping bottles, chains, all that, smart. I mean, I got my degree out of Drexel. Went from UCF to Drexel, like, lived both lives and I was empty. I was dead inside. I was raised Catholic, so I never thought it was Jesus, it was religion. And I started seeking the higher power, asking him, like, who are you? And I kept hearing a voice say, keep going, as I'm studying these different religions. And then one day after weeks of just coincidental events, and I was agnostic, I took an LSD, like, I knew there was a higher power. I was energy, philosophy, quantum physics, like, that type of guy, like, I didn't know. But then I had an encounter with Jesus Christ, a legitimate, tangible, like, knocked to the ground in my apartment, not a pastor, not a church. Fell to the ground like demons coming out of me, like spitting up blood, like just not 
shaking all over and speaking in tongues, didn't know what I was doing, feeling the peace I never had in my life. Like the, the fulfillment, I had altars, I had altars with statues, I had salt in corners and herbs with rituals and, and baths and sage. I knew all different types of sage, how to burn them, where to burn them. I was angry. No one knew I was successful in the world, but I know it's Jesus. He's the truth, the way, and the life. I just, I, it's not logic, it's spirit. Like our spirit comes from God. That's why in our, deep within our spirit, we always cry out for something. There's, Cause like, this world don't mean nothing. What are we doing here? We go to work, we, if you have a family, okay, cool. All this stuff is little temporary fulfillment, but then we have to sit here and say, what are we doing? What is this? It's, we die, we live to die. What's, what's going to happen? And I know y'all, how old are you? I'm 21. 21. 21. I know y'all, like, I'm, I'm, 10, I'm 11 years older, right? So I know at 21, you got ambition and goals, which is good. You should. That's, a, that's positive. But, like, there's going to be a point where you're going to come to a crossroads, like, for real, like a deep, because you're going to be successful, both of you. You guys are going to be, because you guys are, both, both of you women are very smart. Like, I peep it, the way you speak, the way you carry yourself, by the spirit. I can feel it, by the spirit. Very smart, going to be super successful, going to have husbands, children, all that. But there's going to be a point where you're going to be like, yo, what is the purpose of life, for real? Like, I love all everything I have, but what is it? And then God's going to reveal himself to you. So I just want to let y'all know that, that he loves y'all, y'all are protected, and the encounter's going to come. The encounter is that encounter that, oh my, that gets, you know what I'm saying? But you have to seek to find it. When you, did, were you hurt? Were you hurt by a family member when you were younger that caused you to be angry? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I just keep seeing in the spirit. <laughs> Yeah, um... Like, like, like six or seven years old? How old are you? Um, I was pretty young. Yeah. It was more so like my dad, like my biological father. But yeah. And it caused you to be real angry? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of, resent, like, kind of like resentment towards men. Um, definitely resentment towards men because it's like as you get older, like the trauma and stuff that you go through as a kid kind of just stays with you. So it's like now that I'm getting older, I'm more so realizing like the things that happened in the past and more so understanding myself as to who I am, the way I am today. But definitely a strong resentment against men because it's like your father is your first mm -hmm. like introduction to love from a man. And it's like if you don't have that, it's like, it's yeah. But you know, you have a heavenly father. Mm -hmm. The way he loves you, like your identity, as you have the encounter, he's going to show you. His, he's so real. His presence is tangible. I could sit there and pray, and I could feel the presence of God just basking it. I've seen demons cast out of people. I've seen people healed from diseases in, my, like, in the streets. Like, mm -hmm. I pray for someone, and they get healed. Like, not like a whole, like, ritual. Like, I, I'm talking about the Holy Ghost heal them. I was not a believer at all. And, and you, you were raised by, in a Christian home, household. And, like, right now, currently... There's men in your, like, there's, um, you want a relationship, but you really, are you in a relationship? Yeah, but you want one so bad. I see, like, there's, like, a taller man. I don't know. I, he's, like, and, and, like, I feel the spirit of God right now, strong. And, like, and, and you, you, you want, you're genuine. You're loyal. You want a true relationship. Like, you're looking at the future. You're looking at plans. You got plans. You're, like, I'm tired of this little kid stuff. But it's, like, the men that you keep, that you talk to, they just don't, they just be, like, like, they don't have the same mentality. Are you dating a basketball player? Football player. I seen an athlete in the spirit. I was like, who is it? Okay. For UCF. Uh, no, that's what school? Okay. All right. <laughs> um, you need. Uh, as I'm speaking to her, I, I could hear it right here. And the Lord, like uh, the Lord, was telling me that you need to find a man of God. He's not gonna allow you to be fulfilled by a man until you find a man of God. He's not gonna allow you. It'll be heartbreak after heartbreak. You're only 21. You don't want to go through that. I didn't find my wife till I was 29. She's a Haitian woman from New York City, from Harlem. You know how much stuff she went through? She's beautiful. My woman, my, my wife is beautiful. And she had to go through a lot. I was a, I'll just be very honest, a whore. Like, I was a player. Like, I was the worst of the worst. So I know how it is. Like, I know, like, how men are. Yeah. I know now in Christ. I've seen, we've seen 10 marriages in our church in the last year. Young people, 24, 25, 21. Like, troop, like, having kids. Like, he's one of them. He's 24. Came to our church. He was him and his wife, beautiful woman, powerful woman of God, Cuban. He's he's Puerto Rican. They're about to have a child named Emmanuel. It's actually my godson. Yeah, but when they came to my church, you know, regular worldly stuff. Yeah. You too. You're gonna you're gonna have. A, I know you resent men. It's through forgiveness. You're gonna have to forgive your your father. Yeah. Uh -huh. Because you know why? It ain't him. There's spirits that operate demonic. There's their de demons are real. I'm just gonna keep it one hundred. Oh yeah, of course. And because of his trauma. He had trauma from his father. Was this? Was this? Do you know? Do you know? Do you know your grandfather? Um, 
Not really? Yeah, not really. I, I remember I went to his funeral, but other than that... Did I he drink just, a lot? Uh, yes, he did. He was a drunk? Yeah, he did. I just seen it in the yeah. spirit. And your dad went through a lot of a lot of stuff, a lot of deep stuff that you don't even know about. Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. He's hurt. He has unforgiveness, too. You, you, you take a lot of your dad's generational blessings. You guys are similar. Yeah. Yeah, I get that a lot. You have to forgive him because you don't allow that to mess. Because then you know what happened? Can I keep it one? You'll mess it up. It's just a never-ending cycle. It'll be it's, it's called it's called generational a, cycle. Generational, generational curse. curse. Yeah. You could break it right now by just releasing forgiveness to your father, saying, "I forgive him because I'm not perfect." Because if you look in the mirror, what have you done to others? Imagine if everything you did to other people, they didn't forgive you. You know what I'm saying? So it, it would it would. I'm in the spirit. That's why I'm not even worried about the mic. <laughs> My fault. <laughs> So you need to forgive and you got to let go of that, whatever that guy, whoever he is, unfortunately. Ooh, we positive. <laughs> we positive about it. <laughs> Dang. Okay. You, you, you want to you wanna get married, right? Yeah, that's crazy. Okay. Huh? Dang, that's crazy. Well, like, that's, that's what I was looking for, though. For real. I was in church Sunday just waiting. I was waiting. I was waiting. I was waiting for my pastor to just be like, hey, cut it out. He's not the man. I don't know who he is and God bless him. I, I don't, it's nothing against him. It's just he doesn't know God. But he tries. Does he have a relationship with God? He tries so, so, so hard. And I don't know if He it's tries like, for you? That's what I was going to say. I don't know if it's that. You're the one that's telling him. He does it on his own. Like, he'll be like, I'm reading today. Okay. I read today. I pray today. Okay. So you, it's not a problem to be his friend and to take your time. But you understand what you have to do in Christ. Yeah. Okay. Valid. Celibacy. Like, you know how you know if a man loves you? That's how, <laughs> no, for real, but that's how you know if he loves you. Because yeah, if he's willing to, it. what do you want to do? Because if, 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 you, if you're just like, I'm going to use this to my advantage, then he's going to just love you for that. But then when you say, and you say, you love me, then you're going to ride with me regardless. Yeah, then he's going to marry. How are you going to have a... What is well, going on? It's the Holy Ghost. If you want to, if you want to, because you're a woman of God, you're a strong, powerful woman of God. You're going to be a business owner. Uh, you're going to be, yeah, you're going to own businesses. you like art. Okay. You're a super, super creative, super prophetic. Yeah. You're gonna, you're just gonna be. You're, you're, you're just a loving person. You guys are a good tag team, du duo. Are you, you guys are just like doing business, or you guys are friends, friends? We're sisters. We're sisters. sisters. Line sisters. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. Yeah. That's crazy. Y'all yeah. <laughs> would do good business together, because she's a go getter, like front line, like, and you, you have a lot of um, creativity. You could like draw everything out. Prophetic. She's very prophetic, and you're very um, apostolic. Like you could build, you could build, doo -doo -doo, build a lot of stuff. So y'all, um, yeah, the guy just either two things. I tell people in the church all the time. I say, look, you got a choice. You can follow the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit. It's how we fight. It's the, it's the strap of the spirit. It's how we fight because the word of God is is is, is eternal. Mm -hmm. I used to be like, oh, the word of God written by the, the white man, and until I started studying the archaeological proof, the historical proof, how it was alive in my life, I got turned out by God. Like, like. Jesus, like, oh my God, I couldn't stop. I, I was, I, and I went to the church, like, why don't I see miracles, signs, and wonders? Why is, why is it so dead, like religion? And then God just started taking me on a path. Revival's now, it's happening. God's gonna, he's gonna show up in your dreams. He's gonna, I'm literally, while you're asleep, he's gonna start encountering you, angels. I have a lot of like dream, like I have a lot of like crazy dreams. I have like some dreams that I still remember like from a kid. Yeah, I heard it like two, 10 minutes ago that you get a bunch of dreams. <laughs> And they come to and they come to pass, they happen. Yeah, they do. I get a lot of deja vu moments. Like I'll be sitting down and be like deja vu. Like it's crazy. Yeah, deja vu is. I get that. It's, he's he's showing you in the spirit. Mm -hmm. You're gonna be straight. A little bit. It's gonna happen. And got you. Actually, you should go to church with her. Mm -hmm. I haven't been to church in a minute. Like I'm more so spiritual than religious, mainly because of it's like not growing. It's relationship. Yeah, like growing up, like I was just raised in the church, but I felt like I just was kind of like pushed in, like I didn't really like find my own way. Religion. Yet, so. Yeah. Forced. Yeah. Like you can't. How are you gonna tell someone to have a relationship with somebody they don't know? If if I'm going to church and I'm worshiping somebody I don't know, it's gonna become religion, legalistic, and you're just gonna be like rules. Okay, this is whack. Like I'm not doing that to my children. I'm gonna tell them come to the church if you want. You can do what you want, but I tell you about my God, what He's done for me. But one day they're gonna see. They're gonna either just curiosity, or they're gonna go through a trial, and they're gonna, and then that's when they're gonna have their encounter. I want my children to have the encounter. That's what you need. Yeah. She, you, you're, you're a firm believer, but lukewarm. You know what that means? You're not hot or cold. You're in the middle. 
So what that means is you love God, but you still kind of want to live worldly a little bit. So you're like, <laughs> the Bible says if she's all the way cold. Like she's not like trying to act like she's like, look, I do me, which is so the Bible says he'd rather you be hot or cold. But when you're lukewarm, he will spit you out of his mouth. Yeah. You don't you, you have too much of a bright future to allow something crazy to happen. I'm serious. You're, you're his. He doesn't want to let you go. He's a jealous God. He loves you. He protects you. You're going to have to like obedience. You got to tell the guy, look, this is how we're going to do it from now on. Keep it 100 and see. And if he breaks your heart, he breaks your heart. And then you get prayer, you, you, you cry out to God, and he, he heals you. Then you wait. I, I don't give it more. I promise. I give it less than two years, and you'll be married if you follow God. Less than two years, you'll be married if you follow God, if you're obedient. If you follow God and you do it the godly way. And where a man takes you out on a date, actually loves you, asks you, do you read your word? Instead of you being the one trying to save somebody, they're coming to you and you're like, yo, there's a whole man of God. It's going to intimidate you because you're going to be like, bro, this is too perfect. Yeah. But God's going to provide him. Because you, you, yeah. you want that. You want that. That's the desire of your heart. You need that for where you're going. You need a strong, a strong man in Christ. Not this, which he, he could be a strong man. Too. I mean, I think I believe in, my, in our church. I tell men to go to the church, I mean, to the gym. Like, make sure you work out. Don't be a scrawny Christian. That's why I tell a them. A scrawny Christian. Yeah, because I mean, <laughs> please. Or like an overweight Christian. Like, how are you gonna be on the pulpit preaching or trying to talk about Jesus? But you got, you know what I'm saying? Like, you just, it looks, it looks hypocritical. We go to the gym. We hit the gym. We soldiers. We hit the streets. We go downtown. All that. And we're not religious. We bring out the music. We do Christian rap. You see the people in our church: dreadlocks, Jordans, fitteds, Puerto Ricans. Hey, First Love Church. I'm actually the pastor. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry. I caught me off guard. Yeah. I caught me off guard. Everyone in our church is young like y'all. I'm, I'm young, too. I'm 32, but I'm one of the oldest. Me and my wife, she's 32, too. We got two kids. I got a two-year-old and a one-year-old. I'm Puerto Rican. She's Haitian. Two mixed kids. They're beautiful. Handsome. Thank you. We have another one on the way. Congratulations. Yeah, hopefully it's a girl. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, God changed my life, changed her life. She was with me in the dope game. She used to count up my money, hundreds of thousands of dollars. She used to move my weight for me. Wow. She's actually my brother-in-law. 18 years old. Ryder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's actually my. He's actually her brother. It's nice to meet you too. Yeah. He got he got saved when he was 15. He lives with us now. He's 18. So I'm gonna pray for y'all. And yeah, I'm gonna, I'll give you Instagram and all that. You can check it out if y'all want to come. You come. I don't force people. And I just want y'all to. Because I know y'all have such a bright future. I know this is divine. This is deeper than any of you. So let's pray real quick. What's your name? Zakaria. Zakaria. And your name? Summer. Summer and Zakaria. Okay. I'm bad with names, but I got this right now. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for Zakaria and Summer. Lord, I thank you that... I thank you that Zakaria is a prophetic woman of God. I thank you that she's going to be used, Lord, to, to create to create so much, Lord. She has a, a mastermind of creativity, Lord. You're going to use her for the kingdom of God. She's going to have the encounter in her dreams. Like you told me, Lord, it's going to happen in your timing, Lord. And Summer, I thank you, Lord, that she's going to flee from fornication. Like it says in the word, it says to run from it. She's not going to be lukewarm, Father God, that she's going to fully commit. She's going to go to her pastor, whoever it is, and be discipled and wait for that man of God. And remember, I told her, when she gets to that obedient part, when she repents, which means change, two years less than two years lord you told me i pray that you have angels surrounding them lord i plead the blood of jesus christ over their sins so that they're, they're forgiven the, the, the word of god says to intercede i intercede right now and i just pray lord that you bless them in your way the way that you desire lord for your glory in jesus name have angels surrounding them everywhere they go in jesus name amen